So we'll just continue from the eighth shloka as such. Give me just one minute. Immediately I will share the screen with you all. There is chapter five, shloka number eight. I just increase the font size quickly. Yeah. So now, if you see in this uh, chapter number five, uh, where we uh, started with that, uh, uh, Narad Muni is asking certain questions to Lord Brahma. And we saw in the second shloka where uh, Narad Muni is asking about the universe that uh, Yad Rupam, what are the symptoms of the universe? Yad Adishtanam, what is its shelter? What is the Adhar Shakti of this universe? What, how is it created? How is it conserved? Uh, conserved? And uh, what it depends on? And what is it composed of? What are the ingredients of this universe? So, and uh, Narad Muni is actually even having his own conviction about or expressing his convictions about Lord Brahma also. And uh, we saw that how uh, Narad Muni is saying that, yes, I, my doubts, you know, uh, uh, but why? So I have this doubt that, uh, please clear my doubt about you, that why do you perform so much austerity? Ghoram Tapaha. Is there someone more powerful than you? Then please clarify. So this is what he is actually asking in this particular shloka. So, Etan me prichata sarvam sarva jnanam sakaleshvara vijanihi yathe vedam aham buddhaye anushasitaha. Yeah. Sushil Prabhu, are you there? Also, it's probably not there today. Okay, Lakshmi and Prabhu, please do the honors of reading the translation and purport both. Yes, Translation. My dear father, you know everything and you are the controller of all. Therefore, may all that I have inquired from you be kindly instructed to me so that I may be able to understand it as your student. Purport. The inquiries made by Narada Muni are very important for everyone concerned. And as such, Narada requested Brahmaji to deem them suitable so that all others who may come in the line of district succession of the Brahma Sampradaya may also know them properly without any difficulty. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much. So now, uh, from this shloka onwards, Lord Brahma is clarifying Narada's doubts. And he's destroying his convictions. Because Narada's conviction was that Lord Brahma is the supreme. But then he's asking that, whom are you meditating on? Is there somebody more supreme? So this conviction, he's actually destroying that. Yes, there is somebody more supreme than me also. So Brahma Uvacha Samyakaruni Kasyedam Vatsate vichikitatam yadaha choditam samyam bhagvat virya darshane. Rupa Madhaji, please read the translation and purport both. Hare Krishna. Translation Lord Brahma said, My dear boy Narada, being merciful to all, including me. You have asked all these questions because I have been inspired to see into the power, into the prowess of the Almighty Personality of Godhead. Purport. Brahmaji, being so questioned by Naradji, congratulated him for it is usual for the devotees to become very enthusiastic whenever they are questioned concerning the Almighty Personality of Godhead. That is the sign of a pure devotee of the Lord. Such disclosure. Such disclosures on the transcendental activity of the Lord purify the atmosphere in which such discussions are held and the devotees thus be become enlivened while answering such questions. 
it is purifying both for the questioners and for the one who answers the questions the pure devotees are not only satisfied by knowing everything about the lord but are also eager to broadcast the information to others for they want to see the glories of the lord are known to everyone thus the devotee feels satisfied when such an opportunity is offered to him this is the basic principle of missionary activities hare krishna yeah so shila prabhupad says that the basic principle of missionary activities is um uh, he's saying that uh uh where a devotee sees others as equal to him uh, which means that when a devotee experiences the joy of kc he feels that krishna is so joyful and if i am feeling joyful practicing krishna consciousness let me share it also with others so that others may also get the same joy and because if they are following the same they will also get the same joy and then the devotee thinks that if material endeavors are so frustrating then others also must feel the same frustration and if they engage in these material such material endeavors let me educate them uh, or uh, let me educate the others uh, so that uh, uh, they should give up their material endeavors and take up to the path of krishna consciousness so that they can also become joyful like me so this is the basic principle of missionary activities and uh, sharing what they have received uh, gratefully with the others so that so if you see lord brahma he is actually thanking narad muni uh, uh, for asking that particular question and uh, uh, he is saying that uh, uh, he is saying that see today you have become merciful upon me and you have asked me such a perfect question and uh, Uh, and because your questions today i have got an opportunity to meditate on the uh, prowess of the supreme personality of godhead so see when somebody is questioning and somebody is answering so what is happening both the hearer and the speaker both are benefited both uh, because the the hearer is thinking that let me ask more doubts let me clarify more so that whatever i have heard uh, from here i can go and actually tell it to the others also that how great the supreme lord is you know i am feeling very joyful you also come and hear so that's how is the like if you see with vignesh prabhu vignesh prabhu what he did he was hearing bhagavatam he he invited vishal prabhu also for bhagavatam so this is like you can say current perfect example that because he was also hearing and he also invited his friend for hearing the bhagavatam so that's how perfect question perfect answers they are purifying fine for both the hearer also and the uh, speaker also let's go to the next so uh, now he is saying that uh, in this particular thing is that see i am subordinate but uh, i am but a subordinate to the supreme lord there is somebody more supreme than me also so he is saying that natrutam tvam tachapi yatha mam prabhavishi boh avigyaya paramatta etavat tatva yato hi me so he is saying that yeah somebody read this pringa please read this is not hare krishna whatever you have spoken about me is not false because unless and until one is aware of the personality of godhead who is, is the ultimate background source, noise coming what is that background noise coming uh uh is it coming on i think yeah i think somebody was speaking behind i yeah now mata ji now is it fine yeah 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 sorry Uh, whatever you have spoken about me is not false because unless and until one is aware of the personality of godhead who is the ultimate truth beyond me one is sure to be illusioned by observing my powerful activities purport 
the frog in the well logic illustrates that a frog residing in the atmosphere and boundary of a well cannot imagine the length and breadth of the gigantic ocean such a frog such a frog when informed of the gigantic length and breadth of the ocean first of all does not believe that there is such an ocean and if someone assures him that factually there is such a thing the frog then begins to measure it by imagination by means of pumping its belly as far as possible with the result that the tiny abdomen of the frog bursts and the poor frog dies without any experience of the actual ocean similarly the material scientist also want to challenge the inconceivable potency of the lord by measuring him with their frog like brains and their scientific achievements but at the end they simply die unsuccessfully like the frog sometimes a materially powerful man is accepted as god or the incarnation of god without any knowledge of the factual god such a material assessment may be gradually extended and the attempt may reach to the highest limit of brahma ji who is the topmost living being within the universe and has a duration of life unimaginable to the material scientist as we get information from the most authentic book of knowledge the bhagavad gita 8.17 brahma ji's one day and night is calculated to be some hundreds of thousands of years on our planet this long duration of life may not be believed by the frog in the well but persons who have a realization of the truths mentioned in the bhagavad gita accept the existence of a great personality who creates the variegatedness of the complete universe it is understood from the revealed scriptures that the brahma ji of this universe is younger than all the other brahmas in charge of the many many universes beyond this but none of them can be equal to the personality of god him narad ji is one of the most one of the liberated souls and after his liberation he was known as narad otherwise before his liberation he was simply a son of a maid servant the questions may be asked why narad ji was not aware of the supreme lord and why he misconceived brahma ji to be the supreme lord although factually he was not a liberated soul is never bewildered by such a mistaken idea so why did narad ji ask all these all those questions just like an ordinary man with a poor fund of knowledge there was such bewilderment in arjuna also although he is eternally the associate of the lord such bewilderment in arjuna or in narada takes place by the will of the lord so that other non liberated persons may realize the real truth and knowledge of the lord the doubt arising in the mind of narada about brahma ji's becoming all powerful is a lesson for the frogs in the well that they may not be bewildered is in misconceiving the identity of the personality of godhead even by comparison to a personality like brahma so what to speak of ordinary men who falsely pose themselves as god or an incarnation of god the supreme lord is always the supreme and as we have tried to establish many times in these purports no living being even up to the standard of brahma can claim to be one with the lord one should not be misled when people worship a great man as god after his death as a matter of hero worship there were many kings like lord ramachandra the king of ayodhya but none of them are mentioned as god in the revealed scriptures to be a good king is not necessary the qualification of being lord ram but to be a great personality like krishna is the qualification for being the personality of god if we scrutinize the characters who took part in the battle of kurukshetra we may find that maharaja yudhishthira was no less a pious king than lord ramachandra and by character and by character study maharaja yudhishthira was a better was a maharaja yudhishthira was a better moralist than lord krishna lord krishna asked maharaja yudhishthira to lie but maharaja yudhishthira protested but that does not mean that maharaja yudhishthira could be equal to lord ramachandra or lord krishna the great authorities have estimated maharaja yudhishthira to be a pious man but they have accepted lord ram or krishna as the personality of godhead the lord is therefore a different identity in all circumstances and no idea of anthrop 
anthropomorphism can be applied to him. The Lord is always the Lord and a common living being can never be equal to him. Thank you, Mataji. Yeah, so he's saying that unless one is aware of this position of the Supreme Lord, who is even beyond Brahmaji, no one can, no one is sure to be, you know, uh, sorry, one is sure to be illusioned by observing even my powerful activities. Now, if you see with Brahmaji, if you all remember the Brahma Vimohan Lila, where, you know, Brahmaji stole the calves and uh, coward voice of Krishna. So, she, uh, so sorry, what I'm saying, she, I'm saying, he, he, when he stole, okay, so, when he stole and he took those coward boys and calves to uh, Brahmaloka. So, and when Krishna came on this side, immediately only two seconds had passed. Okay. So, he's seeing here also, Krish, uh, on the earth also he's seeing in Vrindavan also he's seeing the, uh, you know, the calves and the coward boys. And in Brahmaloka he's seeing the same identical coward boys and calves. Okay. And in this process, in these two seconds, on the earth planet, one full year has passed. And that day, actually Balaramji had not come because it was his birthday. So Balaramji was at home. And that's how, uh, if you see that the Brahmaji of our universe has only four, four heads. But there are millions and billions of universes like how, you know, from your pores, like that the, the Lord also has pores and from the pores of his body, millions and zillions of universes are emanating. And every universe has one Brahma. So some Brahma has 10 heads, some have 20, 50, 100, lakh, 10 lakhs, you know, like that, you know, those Brahmas. And when the Brahma of our earth planet, he sees... Uh, other Brahmas, he feels that I am just an ant in front of all these elephants. So uh, that's how, uh, you know, Brahmaji's lifespan is also so much where we cannot calculate only. Uh, Brahmaji himself has uh, such a huge lifespan, right? Uh, where Priyanka read this, Brahmaji's one day and night is calculated some hundreds and thousands of years on our planet. So, uh, why this frog in the well, this analogy is given. This frog in the well, this analogy is given just because anybody who is only on this earth planet but does not even know Janalok, Tapalok, Maharlok or mm -hmm. the down, you know, hellish planetary Atala, Vitala, Sutal, Patal, Talapal. He is actually a frog in the well because with his limited senses, what can he understand the unlimited? Right? So, uh, that is why this frog, uh, Srila Prabhupada is saying that uh, those who are like frog in the well and no realization about the absolute truth and uh, such a, you know, such a, you know, such an universe the Supreme Lord has created. So, it is very impossible for that particular person to understand. So, this is what Srila Prabhupada is trying to say in this. Let's go to the next. Yena Swarochisha Vishwam Rochitam Rochayam Yaham Yathar Kognir Yatha Samo Yatharaksha Graha Taraka. Sushil Prabhu, please read the translation and purport both. Translation I create. After the Lord's creation, by his personal effulgence, known as the Brahma Jyoti, just as when the sun manifests its fire, the moon, the firmament, the influential planets, and the twinkling stars also manifest their brightness. Purport, Lord Brahmaji said to Narada that his impression that Brahma was not the supreme authority in the creation was correct. Something, sometimes less intelligent man have the foolish impression that Brahma is the cause of all causes. But Narada wanted to clear the matter by the statements of Brahmaji, the supreme authority in the universe. As the decision of the Supreme Court of a state is final, 
Similarly, the judgment of Brahmaji, the supreme authority in the universe, is final in the Vedic process of acquiring knowledge. As we have already affirmed in the previous verse, Naraji was a liberated soul, therefore he was not one of the less intelligent men who accept a false god or gods in their own ways. He represented himself as less intelligent, yet intelligently presented a doubt to be cleared by the supreme authority so that the uninformed cannot might take ca cannot uh, uninformed might take note of it and rightly informed about the intricacies of the creation and creator. In this verse, Brahmaji clears up the wrong impression held by the less intelligent and affirmed that he fears the universal variegatedness after the creation by the glaring effulgence of Lord Krishna. Brahmaji has also separately given his statement in the Samhita known as Brahma Samhita, where he says, I serve the Supreme Person of Godhead, Govinda, the primeval Lord, whose transcendental bodily force is known as the Brahmajiti, which is unlimited, unfathom, and all pervasive, is the cause of the creation of unlimited numbers of planets, etc., with varieties of climates and specific conditions of life. The same statement in the Bhagavad Gita 14.27, Lord Krishna is the background of the Brahmajiti. Brahmanohi Parishthitam. In the Nirukti or Vedic dictionary, the import of Pratishta is mentioned as that which establishes. So the Brahmajati is not independent or self sufficient. Lord Sri Krishna is ultimately the creator of the Brahmajati, mentioned in this verse as Sorusisha or the effulgence of the transcendental body of the Lord. This Brahmajati is all pervading and all creation is made possible by his power. Therefore, the Vedic hymns declare that everything that exists is being sustained by the Brahma Jati. Sarvam Khalo Idam Brahma. Therefore, the potent seed of all creation is the Brahma Jati, and the same Brahma Jati, unlimited and unfathom, is established by the Lord. Therefore, Lord Sri Krishna is ultimately the supreme cause of all creation. Aham Sarvasya Prabhava. One should not expect the Lord to create like a blacksmith with a hammer or other instruments. The Lord creates his potencies. He has his multifarious potencies. Parasya Shakti Vividaiva Shwate. Just as, as the small seed of a banyan tree has the potential to create a big banyan tree, the Lord disseminates, disseminates all varieties of seeds by his potent Brahmajati, Swaruchisha. And the seeds are made to develop by the watering process of persons like Brahma. Brahma cannot create the seeds, but he can manifest the seeds into a tree, just as a gardener helps plants and orchards to grow by the watering process. The example cited here of the sun is very appropriate. In the material world, the sun is the cause of all illumination, fire, electricity, the rays of the moon, etc. All luminaries in the skies are creation of the sun. The sun is the creation of the Brahma Jyoti, and the Brahma Jyoti is the effulgence of the Lord. That's the ultimate cause of creation is the Lord. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So Krishna is also saying in the Bhagavad Gita, the 14th uh, chapter 27, the last shloka that is there, he's saying that um, uh, Brahmano hi pratishtitham amritasya syavacha shashvatasya cha dharmasya Sukasya Kanti Kasya Cha. He's saying that I am only the basis of the impersonal Brahman, which is immortal, imperishable, and eternal, and is the constitutional position of the ultimate happiness. So, uh, if you see, uh, the constitution of Brahman is immortality. It is eternal. It is, you know, full of happiness. So, uh, Brahman is actually the, uh, you can say, beginning of transcendental realization, where uh, uh, Paramatma, the super soul, is the middle, and the second stage is transcendental realization, and the supreme personality of Godhead is the ultimate realization of the absolute truth. So, therefore, both Paramatma and the uh, impersonal Brahman are actually within the supreme person itself. So, 
uh, it is explained even uh, uh, you know in the uh, seventh chapter maya dakshina prakriti surya ch sachara jara that material nature is a manifestation of the inferior energy of the supreme lord and the lord uh, impregnates this inferior material nature with uh, the fragments of the superior nature and uh, that is uh, you know the spiritual touch in the material nature and when the living entity is conditioned by this material nature then uh, begins the cultivation of spiritual knowledge and he elevates himself from this position of uh, material existence and he is gradually rising up to the brahman conception of the supreme uh, lord so when we say brahma bhuta prasanna atma no sochati no kanjati samo sarveshu bhuteshu mad bhakti labate param so that is brahma bhuta uh, prasanna atma means what he is not affected by uh, either uh, happiness or distress he is equipoised on that particular uh, level and um, uh, from the brahman level if he wants to you know rise up to parmatma uh, and then to the realization of supreme then there are many uh, even uh, vedic examples also given like the four kumaras they were previously impersonalist they were actually you know impersonal uh, they had then uh, impersonal brahman conception of truth but the moment they actually smelled the tulsi leaves of uh, the, the 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 gal the tulsi from the garland of lord vishnu immediately you know uh, they rose to the platform of devotional service so uh, one who is not able to even elevate himself from this impersonal conception of brahman he actually is running the risk of uh, falling down again and again so bhagavatam also is stating that although one may rise to this impersonal brahman but uh, you know uh, he does not go any further uh, because he does not have information about the supreme person his information or his mind is absolutely not clear about and that is why uh, um, uh, there is a great chance of this person who is a brahmavadi or uh, Uh, the person who is an impersonalist of falling down and uh, if he is not engaged in devotional service to the lord so uh, when one understands the personality of god at that where uh, you know he says that rasove sah rasam hi evayam labdhavan nadi bhavati so when somebody is understanding that the personality of god is the reservoir of pleasure krishna he actually becomes you know transcendently blissful so the supreme lord when when is approached by a devotee then there is exchange of these uh six opulences uh the servant of like you know the king also is enjoying uh, an equal level as the king so uh, eternal happiness imperishable happiness eternal life you know uh, all these are accompanying devotional service so this realization of this brahman or uh, eternity or imperishability is included in devotional service and it is already possessed by a person who is practicing devotional service so this living entity though he is brahman by nature Uh, and has the desire to lord it over the material world uh, and due to this he falls down on this um, in this material world and uh, his uh, constitutional uh, so in his constitutional position uh, the living entity is above the three modes of material nature but because he comes in association with the material nature then now what he does is he entangles himself with the different modes of material nature with goodness passion ignorance and all and then because of this association then he desires to dominate this material world he wants to lord it over and uh, when he is engaged in devotional service uh, in full you know you can say krishna conscious then he immediately is into his transcendental position he, he becomes situated back to his uh, transcendental position and therefore 
when we say that devotional service is beginning by Shravanam Kirtanam uh, Vishnu Smaranam, all the nine methods of uh, realizing realizing this uh, the Supreme Lord. And that should be practiced in the association of devotees. So when you gradually associate with the devotees and uh, by the mercy of the spiritual master, uh, our, uh, our material desire to dominate over the material nature, lauded over the material nature is removed. And then we become very firmly situated in the transcendental loving service of the mind. So, uh, uh, if you see, devotional service to the Lord is very simple because uh, if we engage ourselves always uh, in the service of the Lord uh, and we eat the remnants of the food offered to the Lord, we offer the deity, then we smell the flowers offered to the lotus feet of the Lord, we see all the different holy places of the Supreme Lord and the reciprocation of his devotees. We always chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra and, and uh, you know, we celebrate his appearances, disappearances. Then when you're following such processes, immediately we become detached from this material world. And uh, 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 or we become even detached from all these material activities. Also. So uh, one who can thus, you know, situate himself in the Brahma Jyoti or the different varieties of Brahman conception is equal to the Supreme Person of Godhead in quality but not in quantity. So, uh, that's uh, where, you know, when a particular person does devotional service, then he is, uh, he is actually following a Brahman realization of, he has Brahman realization also and he has Paramatma realization also. But one who is a Brahman realization, he does not have a Paramatma realization and Bhagwan realization. Or one who is a Paramatma Vadi, he does not have Brahman realization or Bhagwan realization. So he is bereft. Sorry, the Paramatma realization person has the Brahman realization to some extent, but not the Bhagwan realization. So when I say Bhagwan realization means it includes Paramatma realization and the Brahman realization also. Okay, so let's go to the next. Sorry for that elaborate uh, explanation on that. Generally, we, we avoid giving elaborate explanation but this was necessary uh, so the next he says is that tasmai namo bhagavate vasudevaya dhimahi yan maya ya dura dura yan maya ya durjaya ya mavadanti jagat kurum so then uh, uh, brahmaji is offering obeisances over here. Vignesh Prabhu, read the translation and purport both. Brinda is there. I should come today. Yeah. Hare Krishna. I offer my obeisances and meditate upon Lord Krishna, Vasudeva, the personality of Godhead, whose invincible potency influences them, the less intelligent class of men, to call me the Supreme Controller. Purport. As would be more clearly explained in the next verse, the illusory potency of the Lord bewilders the less intelligent to accept Brahmaji or for that matter any other person as the Supreme Lord. Brahmaji, however, refuses to be called this and he directly offers his respectful obeisances unto Lord Vasudeva or Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead. As he has already offered the same respect to him in Brahma Samhita 5.1 Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vigraha Anadirade Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. The Supreme Lord is the personality of Godhead Sri Krishna, the primeval Lord in his transcendental body, the ultimate cause of all causes. I worship that primeval Lord Govinda. Brahmaji is conscious of his actual position and he knows how less intelligent persons, bewildered by the illusory energy of the Lord, whimsically accept anyone and everyone as God. A responsible personality like Brahmaji refuses to be addressed as the Supreme Lord by his disciples or subordinates. But foolish persons praised by men of the nature of dogs, hogs, camels and asses feel flattered to be addressed as the Supreme Lord. Why such persons take pleasure in being addressed as God or why such persons are addressed as God by foolish admirers is explained in the following verse. Yeah, because 
people who are bewildered by maya they think brahma ji as the supreme so uh, and uh, why they are bewildered that is been explained okay विलज्जमान शांत ईक्ष पथे मु विमोहिता विकथन विकथनते महा ममा सॉरी ममाहम दूर्धीय या विशाल प्रभु रीति ट्रांसलेशन एंड पोपट बोर्ड हरे कृष्ण माता जी ट्रांसलेशन दिल्यूजरी एनर्जी ऑफ द लॉर्ड कैन नॉट टेक अ प्रेसिडेंस बीइंग अशेम्ड ऑफ हर पोजीशन बट दोस हु आर बिविल्डेड बाय हर ऑलवेज टॉक नॉनसेंस बीइंग एब्जॉर्ब्ड इन थॉट्स ऑफ इट इज आई एंड इट इज माइन पोपट द इनविंसिबली पावरफुल डिल्यूडिंग एनर्जी ऑफ द पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड और द थर्ड एनर्जी रिप्रेजेंटिंग ne science can bewilder the entire world of animation but still she is not strong enough to be able to stand in front of the supreme lord ne science is behind the personality of godhead where she is powerful enough to mislead and the living beings and the uh, primary symptom of bewildered per person is that they talk nonsense nonsensical talks are not supported by the principles of vedic literatures and first great nonsense talk is it is i it is mine a godless civilization is exclusively conducted by such false ideas and such persons without any factual realization of god except a false god or falsely falsely declared themselves to be god to mislead persons who are already bewildered by the deluding energy those who are before the lord however and who surrender unto him cannot be influenced by the deluding energy therefore they are free from the misconception of it is i it is mine and therefore they do not accept a false god or pose themselves as equal to the supreme lord identification of the bewildered person is distinctly given in this verse yeah so see maya has actually two qualities one is our avarnatmika shakti and one is uh, pratyaksh uh, uh, प्रत्यक्षापित शक्ति और मीन्स शी हैज आवर निम आर आवर निमिता का शक्ति मीन्स कवरिंग पोटेंसी एंड प्रत्यक्षापित शक्ति मीन्स एक्चुअली किकिंग पोटेंसी शी हैज सो द एक्सटर्नल एनर्जी विच इज यू नो शी इज ऑल्सो अंडर द फुल कंट्रोल ऑफ द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड सो इफ यू सी that uh, uh when uh, you know the when when in the uh, what is that uh, shloka in that canto uh first canto seventh chapter where he says that bhakti yogena manasi samyak pranhite male apashyat param purnam mayam yat tap tat ap ashrayam so He, uh, over there he is saying that uh, 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 where uh, there is this perfect vision uh, of uh, of understanding the absolute truth is possible only by this uh, linking process of devotional service so uh, one can realize the absolute truth only by devotional service no other process is there for realizing uh, the supreme lord and uh, one can enter also into the kingdom of godhead by such perfect knowledge so when you have imperfect realization of the absolute by you know the practical approach of this impersonal brahman or localized pramatma it does not permit anyone to enter into the kingdom of godhead so when a person has brahman realization brahman he does not get an entry so uh, narad because in the 7th chapter if you see narad muni is advising vyas dev so he is saying that uh, he is advising uh, vyas dev that if you want to become absorbed in transcendental meditation on the supreme lord and his activities then vyas dev should take notice of the should not take notice of the 
Brahman effulgence. But he should meditate on the uh, Supreme Personality of Godhead. And uh, even uh, when, if you say, uh, the, even in uh, the Bhagavad Gita, the seventh uh, chapter, 19th sloka, it says that, Bahunama Janma Namante Gyanavanma Prabhadyate Vasudeva Sarvaiti Sarva Matma Surjindu. Because after many, many, uh, many, many births and deaths, one who really surrenders to the Supreme Lord, knowing the Supreme Lord to be the cause of all causes, and uh, such, a per such a particular person uh, is a very rare soul. In fact, he is a very great rare soul. Prabhupada is saying in his translation over there. So, if you see, after many, many realizations, particular person understands that uh, uh, that, oh, Vasudev is all in all. So, in the beginning of the spiritual relation, uh, one is trying to give up one's attachment to material things and uh, there is some leaning towards impersonalism. But when he is advancing again more, he understands that, oh, uh, that there are, spirit, there are activities in spiritual life also and uh, there is some devotional service also. So, he becomes attached to the Supreme Lord and then he's surrendering. So then the, when he's understanding that, okay, uh, Krishna is all in all uh, and uh, Krishna's mercy is, you know, only everything. And then he's only the cause of all causes. And all this material manifestation is not uh, uh, independent from the Supreme Lord. So he realizes that this material world is a perverted reflection of all that spiritual variety and the and realizes that uh, uh, you know uh, that in everything there is a relationship with the supreme lord because if you see there also there is only relationship the supreme lord has a relationship with the glass of milk also that he is drinking because in this material world everything is jad dead matter but in the spiritual world, everything is consciousness. So the glass also has consciousness. The bed also has consciousness. Krishna's dhoti, Krishna's flute, Krishna's crown, uh, Krishna's every paraphernalia you can think over there has consciousness. And over there, everybody is trying to please the Supreme Lord. So if a glass of water is presented to the Supreme Lord, that glass of water was the thing that how will I actually put all that sweetness into this water or the water himself was just thinking that how will I give the pleasure to the senses of the Supreme Lord and they keep on running helter-skelter for pleasing the Supreme Lord to put in all that. Over here we'll put some essence and we'll put some uh, you know something to make that water sweet or some tang or some maza will put but over there automatically the glass and the water they are trying to you know unite and cooperate with each other to give pleasure to the senses of the supreme lord so uh, you know when this person is thinking that yes uh, uh, that vasudev is only all in such so such this this is a very universal vision of you know the supreme lord and um, it it is it precipitates one's full surrender to the supreme lord which is a very high goal in life and then such souls are really very surrendered souls and you know uh, if you see uh, that uh, when in this particular shloka, they say, when you say Vasudev Sarvati, then even the Upanishads also are confirming that. That yes, Vasudev is only, you know, he is Hiranyamai Patrena, veil of the impersonal Brahman. Because we, we, we saw it in the Isha Upanishad, right? And, uh, and when that curtain is removed by the mercy of the Lord, the real face of the Supreme Lord is seen. And the, the, the Supreme Lord is uh, a Purusha. Or he is a person. You interact with a particular person. And it's not like that. that uh, he is not going to interact with you. The Supreme Lord equally interacts. And uh, uh, and he is a perfect person. He is the original person. 
he's the perfect person uh, and he has so many energies also we'll be seeing now actually if you see uh, from 14th shloka onwards 14 16 uh, 15 all these shlokas are going to give all his different uh, energies and all these energies that are there uh, uh, you know they are external energy and internal energy energies also so the internal energy is there along with the supreme lord just like the moonlight is always with the moon and the external energy is compared to darkness why because it keeps the living entities always in darkness of ignorance only so then this energy of the lord is completely under full control whoever it is either the internal energy or the external energy so the internal energy is the superior energy and the inferior energy is called the maya energy but uh, uh, it is energy of the supreme lord and uh, uh, the superior energy is always in the spiritual realm and the inferior energy is always in the material realm and uh, when uh, one is under the shelter of the internal potency then the darkness of this material ignorance is immediately removed and uh, those who are self satisfied or who are the atma ramas or those who are uh, fixed in trance take shelter of this internal energy or the yoga maya potency of the supreme lord and that is why uh, when we say devotional service we say bhakti yoga is actually the function of the internal energy and there is no so uh, there is no place for the inferior energy or uh, the material energy uh, just as there is no place for darkness when uh, the sun arises right immediately dissipates that so internal energy is superior to the spiritual bliss also it is when it is attainable in the uh, you know uh, when somebody has this brahman uh, impersonal brahman realization so even in the bhagavad gita i say that uh, this impersonal brahman is the effulgence that is also an emanation from the absolute like for example i'll give you all uh, you see a truck coming from very far but you exactly not seeing because the headlights are so very strong you just see that there are huge two headlights coming towards me right but behind the headlight there is a truck similarly from the body of krishna there is a great effulgence emanating and that is why because a great effulgence is emanating we cannot see the person standing behind that effulgence and that is only called hiranyamai patrena that effulgence of the supreme lord that is there and uh, uh, who can see the Supreme Lord? Only by the mercy of the Supreme Lord, uh, whenever he wishes, then that particular person can see the Supreme Lord. Otherwise, uh, nobody else can see the Supreme Lord. Okay, let's go to the next. Dravyam karma cha kalas cha svabhavo jiva eva cha वासुदेवात परो ब्रह्मन न चान्यो अर्थो ही तत्वतः वे नए श्लोक दिस इस ब्रिंदा प्लीज रीड दिस ट्रांसलेशन the five elementary ingredients of creation the interaction thereof set up by eternal time and the intuition or nature of the individual living being are all differentiated parts and parcels of the personality of Godhead Vasudeva and in the truth there is no other value in them. Purport. This phenomenal world is impersonal. The representation of Vasudeva because the ingredients of its creation, their incarnation and the enjoyer of the resultant action the living being are all produced by the external and internal energies of Lord Krishna. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 7.4-5. The ingredients, namely earth, water, fire, air and sky, as well as the conception of material identity, intelligence and the mind, 
are produced of the external energy of the Lord. The living entity who enjoys the interaction of the above gross and subtle ingredients are set by, up by eternal time is an offshoot of an internal potency with freedom to remain either in the material world or in the spiritual world. In the material world, the living entity is incised and antecised by deluding me science, but in the spiritual world, he is in the normal condition of spiritual existence without any delusion. The living entity is known as the marginal potency of the Lord. But in all circumstances, neither the material ingredients nor the spiritual parts and parcel are independent of the personality of Godhead Vasudeva. For all things, whether products of the external, internal, or marginal potencies of the Lord are simply displays of the same effulgence of the Lord, just as light, heat, and smoke are displays of fire. None of them is separate from the fire. All of them combine together to be called fire. Similarly, all phenomenal manifestations as well as the effulgence of the body of Vasudeva are his impersonal features, whereas, his, whereas he eternally exists in his transcendental form called Satchitananda Vigraha, distinct from all conceptions of the material ingredients mentioned above. Hare Krishna. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. So, you know, after establishing the Supreme Lord's position superior to himself and clarifying Narada's doubt, Brahmaji is now answering Narada's question in the second, uh, you know, uh, shloka that he asked of this particular chapter that uh, what are the symptoms of the universe? Yad Rupam. So the symptoms of the universe, it is, has five components of this universe and they are not different from Lord Vasudev. Uh, as a, uh, you know dif uh, differentiated parts and passes and there is nothing but he is only existing in uh, truth so mm, you, if you see that uh, uh, when when you say uh, over here that uh, mm, mm, any uh, So, uh, when when you say, you know, this dravyam as such, dravyam karma kalascha, so all these, you know, swabhavo, uh, jiva evaja, all this swabhavo also is there, or jeev also, karma also. So, you know, dravya means actually the material ingredients, material ingredients, earth, water, air, fire, and ether, that is there. So, all these, whether it is dravya, whether it is kal, time, whether it is karma, whether it is swabhava, whether it is jiva, they all are actually emanating from Lord Vasudeva, Parabrahma. So these all can be observed only by Pratyaksha or Anuman Praman. Okay. So uh, uh, when you say Dravya, Swabhava and Karma are actually Maya Shakti of the Supreme Lord. And Jiva is actually, you know, the Shakti of the Again, Supreme Lord also. And Kala is another Shakti of the Supreme Lord. So all these three things uh, that we see in this material world, uh, they are various energies of the Supreme Lord. Uh, because uh, energy and the energetic are not different from the Supreme Lord. And therefore, whatever we are seeing in this material world is Vasudev only. So when we say any action gives rise to karma or subhava, right? So, subhava means you have an inherent nature. So, subhava also means that uh, proclivities. Karma means some inevitable reactions which will anyway come to you, right? And you can say, uh, we can say no to proclivity, but this karma we cannot say no. So karma indicates what a person deserves because of his previous activity. And then this swabhava, that indicates what are his general desires. Uh, every action, uh, you know, um, a person performs gives two kinds of results. 
let's say first time i ate one uh, you know i ate one rasgulla and uh, mm, oh, mm, and if uh, you know uh, uh, i'm diabetic then my sugar level you know may shoot up so uh, therefore my karma for uh, 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 my karma the first karma that is there it is the first reaction that i get and uh, uh, if i have liked that rasgulla and uh, that gulab jamun or whatever it is and uh, i will develop a taste i want one more you know gulab jamun so uh, for eating the gulab jamun again then that is actually swabhava ki mera swabhava ki mujhe mujhe gulab jamun acha lagta hai to uh, you know main khata rahunga so that is why it can be understood uh, you know that uh, what is swabhava and what is uh, karma and that is why uh, all these are actually you know the energies of the supreme lord so let's go to the next okay i think again this oh this is a very very beautiful shloka this is such a wonderful shloka that it's saying that uh mm, the shelter and the dependence of the universe is on the supreme lord and i think this is a very big expression right? this is a big purport also yeah it's a big purport and it is a big explanation also so dear devotees uh, i will hold over here why because uh, it's 9 10:15 we will meet on monday now and uh, saturday and sunday we don't have classes for bhagavatam but monday to friday we do have classes on tuesdays generally if i'm not gone for seva in the temple because i do dt dressing in the temple so if i am not there then priyanka what she does is she reads prabhupad's lectures and all the devotees together read prabhupad lectures with rupa mata ji and priyanka mata ji that is the only day that i skip that reading part but i do read whatever uh you all are reading as such so then i don't also miss my reading session as such so we will meet on monday 9:15 same time thank you so much dear devotees shila prabhupad ki jai gaur bhakta vrind ji ke thank you for your active participation i'm sorry if somebody is not able to read we will give you a chance on monday to read yeah thank you so much thank you bhai mata ji dandas hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna